Greetings, everybody. This is Bishop Coleman coming to you with another video. Uh, we just uh, want to thank you all for joining in with us today. Uh, this video is entitled The Devil's Spawn. The Devil's Spawn. And uh, we just want to encourage you and thank you for joining in with us. Uh, we are excited about this time that we're living in because it's a lot of things that's happening it's happening so quickly and uh we just want to just focus on a few things try to get a little understanding get a little bit of knowledge and insight on a lot of the things that's going on a lot of things that's happening today in the world and why is so much so evil that's why I came up with the topic and the title, The Devil's Spawn. The Devil's Spawn. Uh, we, we see so much happening uh, that um, we got to have an explanation for all this madness that's in the world. All right, uh, we're going to get started and go into our lesson today. Uh, we're going to look at the word spawn. And uh, the dictionary tells us that it's a product or offspring of, of a person or a place used to express distaste or disgust. Now, I know if you're like me, there's a lot of things that's going on that are very, very distasteful, very, very disgusting that's going on. Uh, and, um, and we know that it has an origin. It has to come from somewhere. And uh, we're going to look at that a little bit closer, but let's uh, finish uh, talking about spawning. It's uh, to generate or to breed or to produce, to provoke or originate a starting point. You know, there, there's a starting point for everything. Everything has a starting point. Uh, this uh, spawning situation that's been going on has been going on for a long time. It has been uh, transpiring and taking place down through the years. And uh, we are noticing that it is coming to a close, coming to an end. But let's, let's take a look at how and ways that it spawns. All right, number one, uh, it can spawn through education. Many of you all know that we have been mis miseducated. A lot of things that we have learned are, are lies. We, we have learned lies after lies in school. Education is, is not what it used to be. Uh, education is uh, a, a world of deception. They teach you what to think and not how to think. So uh, this spawning situation uh, starts with the education room. We have been miseducated. All right, another way is that uh, it, it deceives us through movies. A lot of movies that we watch uh, cause that spawning process or, or the seed to be sown into our life and, and cause us to react or to desensitize us or to prepare us for a coming change or a coming doom or, or a coming situation. We have been primed for this uh, occasion that we're entering into and the things that's happening in the world uh, through the TV and the education. They've been teaching us, and we've been looking at this thing developing, and now it's coming uh, to full fruition. So movies play a, a great part. Next, your environment. You are a product of your environment. Uh, many of us have to know and understand that um, the scripture already warned us and told us that evil communication corrupt good manners. So uh, you are a product of your environment. Uh, uh, so, so you have to understand that you can't hang around everything, can't be around everything. They used, used to teach us in the, in the church that uh, you got to come out from among them. You got to be you separate. You got to touch not the unclean thing. Don't indulge. Don't don't get yourself entangled with a lot of the stuff that's in the world. I know a lot of people may want to uh, consider that as old fashioned, but there are a lot of things that are old fashioned that are never going away. 
principles and laws and precepts are old fashioned, but they still apply to our life today. All right, let's continue. All right, we have association. Uh, they used to tell us and warn us when we were children to stay away from those bad crowds. You know, uh, they used to tell us to get away from those uh, boys because they might might come into some trouble. Uh, a lot of times, a lot of guys have gone to jail just by being in the wrong environment or hanging around the wrong people, end up getting a life sentence. And, you know, and they just may be the innocent bystander and the crook get away. So uh, your association can spawn uh, a change in your life. Then we have unbridled entertainment. You know, uh, sometimes you can get caught up in entertainment. Uh, you caught up in having fun, caught up in having a good time. Uh, I just received words that a, a young man that I've been knowing for years and years passed away. I uh, just found this out today. He passed away, but I found out some other things about him that was very, very hard to believe. And, um, you know, uh, now he's gone, and I believe it's a product of his environment, things that he uh, uh, encountered, things that he entangled himself with, probably contributed to his departure. But, um, however, we, we, we're not here to talk about him or that situation, but just know and trust and believe that you can be uh, vacuumed up in an activity or in a belief or in association. You can be killed because you with somebody that was uh, supposed to be killed. Uh, you can be on an airplane and uh, socializing with people, just like the people that was in the plane with Kobe Bryant, all of them, I believe, came to their end. So your association and you know has a lot to do in unbridled in entertainment. All right, uh, uh, let's let's continue and look and see what's what's going on here. Now I have a picture of here of an individual that's um, walking through the land of giant, and uh, he is sowing tares. You know we have a scripture in the Bible that talks about a sower went out to sow and and, and something happened. And we're going to take a look at that. Uh, uh, so he's sowing tares, big giant. Uh, you know, in, in, in famine looking. They look like he's malnourished, you know. So a lot of times the wicked and the evil one is, is deficient himself. So he want to sow his, his deficiency into your life. Uh, he, he wants you to be like him. He wants you to be a product uh, uh, of his teaching and his belief. So, sowing tares, let's look at sowing tares. In the book of Matthew 13 and 25, it says, But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. So a lot of times uh, 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 the enemy will do his damage and get out the way. Sometimes he'll cause confusion among friends and then get back somewhere to look and see how they're going to react and see what kind of action is going to come out of his discord that he have sown. All right, it says, But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed um, tares among the wheat and went his way. All right, let's see what else it says. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared tares also. So we see that uh, when it came up, it brought forth tears. Uh, so, so you can have a situation where things are supposed to be uh, one way, but because of the environment, the cause of the things that have been done, it turns out a total, di total different way. So while men slept, uh, we're living in an age of people are still asleep. That's why we call this uh, Wake Up Hebrews, this channel. We, we are endeavoring to wake men up. And uh, it seems like to me with all the noise that's going on, with all the disruption in, in your day and your time, your schedule of how you've been doing things should wake you up. Uh, it, it should be a sobering experience right now 
what's going on in this world and what we see happening. All right, so we see that while men slept, his enemy came and sold tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared tares also. So uh, we know that uh, wheat and tares are very similar to one another. So we, we just going to take a little brief look at the wheat and the tares. If you have them bunched together, you know, they look quite a bit similar. They look pretty much like each other. So uh, we're, we're speaking of wheat and tares, even in our lifestyle. You, we got a lot of people that claim to know and to have uh, uh, the plan of salvation into their life and plan to know the most high. But, but you know, when you put them under the microscope, see, when you look at these uh, two examples, the wheat and the tares, very closely, you can see a dissimulation. You can see that they're not totally or exactly the same. All right? So um, men asleep. And the wicked one is yet sowing tares into the lives of the people. All right, let's continue. The devil spawn. The devil spawn. So he's he's steady at work. Matthew 13 and verse number 27. And uh, it, it reads, So the servant of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in the field? From whence then have it tares? So we see that uh, you need somebody to examine and see that things are going wrong. So we see uh, evidence in, in the churches that tares have been sown into our uh, Christian churches. Uh, we can see the tares have been sown in the, in this country. Well, this country is basically built on wickedness anyway, but but we can see that tares have been sown with all these wicked monuments that they put up to to um, validate their wicked victories that they have perpetrated and and uh, have exercised over the people. Of Yah. Okay, let's continue. So the servants of the household came and uh, said unto him, He says, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed into thy field? From whence then have ye tares? So the, 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 the writer is saying, Where did these tares come from? You sowed uh, good seed in the field. Verse number 28 says, And he said unto them, The enemy have done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? So we, we have to understand that that's a job that's a little bit too much for us as to try to go out and separate things us personally it's going to take the word it's going to take the power of the most high and the will of the most high for us to separate a lot of things that need to be separated uh, because you're going to move something that it doesn't need to be moved you, you you're going to uh, misplace something something's going to be uh, displaced that should not be displaced all right verse number 29 says but he said nay Lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. See, that's what I'm saying. So you, you can't uh, prospect that you can solve things that's, that's wrong. There's a lot of things wrong today. There's a lot of things going wrong with the world. A lot of things going wrong. But we, as an individual, we can't fix them. There are certain things that's going to take the most how to fix. We can't fix some of this stuff that's gone wrong in this wicked world that we're living in. We got to wait on the Father to rectify some of this stuff. Verse number 30 says, 
Let both grow together unto the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles, and burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. So we see the, the Most High has a plan. He's going to uh, take care of a lot of this stuff that's going on. Uh, uh, this spawning that's yet going on uh, is coming to a close, coming to an end. You can't let this the devil spawn spawn into your life. You can't allow this wickedness to enter into your life and corrupt your life and have uh, a good good growing with bad in your life or mixed emotions and don't know which way to go. Confused in your uh, guidance, confused in your decision, confused in your belief. We can't have this, so we we. We, we need the guidance and the spirit of the Ruah in our life so we can understand what's right and what's wrong. You know, so some people don't even know right from wrong now. That's how bad and, and crazy things have gotten. So uh, we're waiting on the reapers to gather together uh, the, these tithes and bind them. And the scripture said they're going to be burned. So we see that we've always had uh, uh, two a decision. It's always been a right, always been a wrong, always been a yes and a no. It's always been a decision process. It goes all the way back to the beginning, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Two trees. One you eat and live, one you eat and die. So we got two, two choices, yes or no. Take one choice to do this or one choice. You take one or either the other. So uh, we see that uh, these tares that are, are in, in the field, these tares that, that are growing in the field among the wheat is, is causing a ruckus in the lives of our people. Uh, we, we, we cannot exercise the wrong thing and think we're going to come out right. Okay, we're going to look at another uh, example. We see under the evil claws of the Pope and his bishops in, in 1684, the Bible was altered significantly. The Catholic Church removed 14 books which collided with its doctrine and hid them from the public view. And we're going to show you which ones they are. But th that's a type and figure of the wicked one sowing tares, sowing wickedness, taking stuff out the Bible that shouldn't be taken out. All right, let's look at what he's took out. This, these are the, the books that was taken out. First Ezra was taken out. Second Ezra was taken out at Tobit and Judith. And the rest of Ezra, uh, Esther, that should tell you right there, the, the rest of Esther, if the first part of Esther was okay, what's wrong with the rest of it? Then we have the wisdom of Solomon was taken out. Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach, was taken out. Baruch, with the epistle of Jeremiah, and the song uh, of the three holy children, uh, the songs of the three holy children, and the history of Susanna, and Baal the dragon, and the prayer of Manasseh, as well as First Maccabees and Second Maccabees. So these are the books that were taken and extracted from the Bible where the wicked one came in and sold tares. The wicked one came in and took something away. The wicked one came in to deceive. And, and we can see uh, nuances of his destruction right here. The wicked monument in the Vatican. That's evil. It, it has nothing to do with uh, what we believe. Nothing to do with what we believe. 
uh, the, the wickedness that's, that's rampant. And it was sold into a lot of the Protestant churches during the Council of Nicene. It was sold into a lot of the Protestant churches. So those of us that uh, came out of that doctrine, we got to share it and awaken those that, that are uh, yet sleep and let them know that the wicked one is so tears. I'm seeing a lot of, and hearing a lot about a lot of so-called pastors uh, laying with the flock, uh, having, uh, you know, just having their way with the, with the flock and, and uh, abusing sexually the parishioners. Now, you know, that should never be uh, uh, named among those of us that are saved and sanctified. All right, let's continue. Now we have the thing about these monuments, these monuments uh, that, that they're tearing down. The monuments, a statue, building, or other structure erected to commemorate a famous or notable person or event. But we see in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 33 and verse 28, it says, Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The foundation of Jacob shall be upon the land of corn and wine, also his heaven shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help. And who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemy shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. So those high places were places of worship, places where... Uh, uh, they taught us that this is how you should worship. We're trotting on them places right now. We're calling out a lot of things in, in the Christian church that's not correct. We're treading on them because we realize that they taught lies. You look at that latter part of that scripture, that 29th, uh, let's read 29th verse again. It says, Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemy shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. So that's what's exactly what's happening. You know, uh, we, we are trying to bring our sisters and brothers out of the uh, darkness and, or the, uh, the deception that they're in and trying to help them to realize who they are and what we have been called to. All right, let's continue on. It says uh, in the word of God, know ye not that ye, that we would judge angels, how much more things that pertain it to this life. Now this is found in the book of Corinthians. And the book of Corinthians is letting us know that we are going to judge angels. We are going to be the ones that they carry the the gavel, and 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 whack it down. You know they've been judging us unrighteously for so long, but it's going to be our turn to judge. Uh, uh, okay, let's let's continue on. All right, it says. If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. So we see that um, the word of God is letting us know that you don't have to be a high official like like the world taught you. You just got to know holiness. You got to dwell in, in, in the po position that uh, is assigned to you. Okay, let's go to verse number nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. So we see that there's a guideline. Now you go and research some of those words that I just recited from the word of God. And um, I don't have to just be so articulate with you every time. But we're going to read that verse again. Verse 9 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you want to 
dwell in the kingdom of God or reign in the kingdom of God, there is a guideline for you. There are some things you're going to have to learn that you must do or not do. Then it says, be not deceived, neither fornicators. You know, you got people committing fornication uh, and think they're going to go in. Fornication can can be uh, among many things. Uh, uh, illicit relationships fall up under fornication. Uh, two individuals without marriage, uh, without uh, deciding that they're going to uh, uh, do it according to the word of God or do it ac according to uh, what has been set up in the word of God. It's fornication. Multiple partners, fornication. Uh, part, uh, having a uh, relationship with same uh, uh, sex is fornication. Uh, uh, bestiology falls up under fornication. So many things fall up under fornication. So, so it, the scripture tells us to neither be fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. Adulterers is a person that's already married and, and doing something uh, ungodly with a person that is, is not their wife or their husband. Nor effeminate. I don't have to go into that. You all know what that is. Or abusers of themselves with mankind. So the enemy has sold these tares. These things that I read unto you or tares that, that have been sold into the church and uh, into the lives of the people of God. And we, we've got to get that out of our system. we got to get it out of our psyche if we want to inherit the kingdom of God. All right, verse number 10 says, Nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Notice it says, nor thieves, nor covetousness. And we talk about our oppressors, how they stole from us and how they they raped our, our women and how they did all kind of ungodly things. So we can't do those things just because we are the children of the Most High and, and then criticize them. So, so we got to be upright. We got to be righteous in all aspects of our life. All right, verse number 11 says, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So, so a process had to take place so that we can come out of a lot of this stuff that, that uh, we used to do. Now, if you used to do a lot of these things, you don't do them no more. Uh, you know, we used to think we was ladies' men, want to have two, three ladies, uh, two lady friends, and all that. You know, all that we gotta let all that stuff go. We gotta purify our mind. We gotta get ourselves in a situation where we can uh, be uh, alert. The Bible says, "Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour." So uh, we have to prepare ourselves for all these things that, that are coming up on the earth. Uh, so much is coming up on the earth that we, we got to be sober to be able to know. If you're drunk, things can be happening. You don't know. you groggy looking all around, you know, because you're so drunk, don't know what's going on. But we got to be sober so if we know, if we hear a noise, you look and alert. Like a Doberman pinching, you know, he hears something, he sit up and his ears stick up straight. You got to know when stuff is wrong. I hear that there was a blood moon that happened uh, uh, this past week on July the 7th, the day after my birthday, which was on July the 6th. There was a blood moon that took place. Uh, and, um, and we uh, know that every time these blood moons come around, that's a sign. The Bible talk about signs in the heavenlies. So we are getting all kind of signs to let us know that the end is near, to let us know that, that we must prepare ourselves. And we must uh, be in a position where the enemy can't come in and take us out. 
Well, uh, it's coming to a close. I'm giving you what the Father has given me, and um, that's about all I have today. But uh, we're going to take another look at one section of the spawn. To to uh, spawn means it's a product or offspring of a person or even Satan. Satan used to express distaste or disgust to generate or breed or produce or provoke or originate or to start something. A lot of this is going on right now. And the ways of spawning, remember these things, watch your education and watch the kind of movies you look at or even you have to look at movies with a spiritual oversight. You gotta watch your environment that you're in. Don't, don't hang around with folk that trouble may fall on you or death may fall on you just from being in that environment. You got to be a, be very careful. And then your association, you can't be laying with somebody's uh, wife and, and her husband crazy. He come blow both of y'all heads off. You, you know, you got to got to be in a place where where you can hear the most high. You, this is a critical time that we in. Okay, and then the last thing, uh, you got to watch out for unbridled entertainment. Unbridled entertainment. So the, the enemy want to try to bring you into a lot of things that will cause hindrance in your life. All right, my sisters and brothers, we thank you once again for joining in with us, talking about the devil's spawn. Peace be unto you. May the Most High bless you, smile on you, and keep you. Shalom.